Hello and welcome, my name is Axel K and today we're revisiting Elemental Shaman. Elemental Shaman is a board based deck that's all about chaining elementals to get the full value of cards like Arid Stormer, Gyre Worm and Lilypad Lurker. The new Granite Forgeborn just got hit with a nerf, taking the health down from 5 to 4. The card is still very powerful since you already have a ton of overstatted minions and having their cost reduced by 1 will increase the value of every single elemental by a ton. For your mulligan you wanna go for Kindling Elemental, Wailing Vapor, Cage Match Custodian and Arid Stormer. If you're on the coin, you can keep Kindling Elemental together with Granite Forgeborn. Play Kindling on 1 and coin the Forgeborn on turn 2. And just like that, the cost of all of your elementals will be reduced by 1. Prioritize playing your Cage Match Custodian early. It's gonna keep your elemental chain up and you get to draw your weapon. Drawing the weapon alone is one of the worst draws you can get, so make sure to get the Cage Match Custodian out as quickly as possible. Your Whack and All Hammer is great. Every time you hit with it, you'll buff one minion on the board with plus 1 plus 1. So make sure to hit an active minion each turn so you can use it to push some extra damage. One of the best minions to buff is your Arid Stormer since it has Wind Fury. You can play it alone, then hit with the hammer, or trade off some of your weaker elementals to make sure that the buff lands on him. You have a bunch of ways to deal face damage from your hand with cards like Lightning Bolt, Serpent Shrine Portal, Gyre Worm, and Fire Elemental. Make sure to count this damage while it's in your hand to set up for some early lethals across a couple of turns. Saving these cards on your hand can help you play around big taunts and even cards like Ice Barrier. But of course you want to use these cards to gain and maintain the board in more aggressive matchups. And playing the fire elemental on curve is just really good. And don't just play out your entire hand. It's important to keep a weaker elemental on your hand to keep up that elemental chain. You never know when you're gonna need the effect of a clutch lily pad lurker. And that's it for elemental shaman. Play on curve, maintain your elemental chain and finish the game with some huge elementals. Thanks for all of the support. I just opened a discord server and I'm having a ton of fun posting decks and chatting with you guys. The more the merrier so I would love it if you guys could join. The link is in the description below. I've had so much success with Elemental Shaman, I just can't stop playing it, but I do have more content planned out. So remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, enjoy the games. Alright, today we're playing some Ragnaros the Fire Lord because we are playing Elemental Shaman. It's actually really good. I know that people say that board based uh, decks doesn't really work right now, but I don't know, I've been having a ton of success with it. So, I don't recommend keeping the menacing Nimbus in the mulligan, but since we kind of want to go fast, we want to take advantage of that it's a 2-drop. So, Wailing Vapor comes down on 1, and the menacing Nimbus does kind of 2 things, right? Or 3 things. It's gonna buff our uh, Wailing Vapor, which is nice. It's gonna be a weak body on board. But it's also gonna keep up our elemental chain since we can draw things like uh, Gyre Worm and where is he? Um, the other one, the the Wind Fury one. So we still have some time, t uh, some time to draw it. So we're just gonna go ahead. This used to be in the deck, but now we run more aggressive stuff. So keeping the elemental chain for the Lily Pad Lurker isn't super important against Warlocks. Maybe if they play Flesh Giants, but since it got nerfed, I don't think we're gonna see any. Okay, that's good. Cage Match Custodian. Let's go for it. So, I think we're just gonna play the Forgeborn next turn, but for now we're just hitting him. And something you kinda wanna do against Warlocks is just kinda punch them as quickly as possible, because if they, um, if they get uh, Steel of Souls, and they're on like 2 HP, they have to heal up a bunch before they can even play the card that he gives them. Because he won't let you like over overpay in HP for your uh, things. Okay, that's not good. So we want to keep this chain up here. And this is by far the best. It's kind of nice, we could play the Wailing Vapor as well then. Okay, let's think a little about our next turn. 5... Hmm. We can't really do any good play on 5 here. I mean, we're gonna float mana. I think we're just putting pressure with the Veiling Vapor. I kinda like it. So what I really wanna see here is like Fire Elementals and Gyre Worms. So we don't really have to um, be too concerned about the Elemental Chain here because by the looks of it, we're gonna get it off every turn. We might break it with the whack and all here because I really want to start punching him in the face. Oh, no. 
I think we came out as the winner there because I think we're gonna kill him before he does his uh, fatigue stuff. Oh, perfect. We just curve out here and then we punch him. I mean, there's not much you can do from here. We have, we need to push one more face damage and then we have lethal with the whack and all. But you know, there is healing and stuff. But this guy might play some big minions. I think that there's like some lifesteal stuff and also a taunt that comes down for free or something. Race dead. Oh, he runs flesh giant. He burned a ton of minions, which is nice. Oh, good. This works out really well. Mm. So I'm thinking here. I think we kind of just want to punch with the hammer here. If we get like a lightning bolt, then we'll just win. And this kind of plays around Hysteria if he didn't burn it. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe I should have the uh, his deck tracker here. Nah. Nah. There's the one. Okay. So we can totally play around all of this, which is nice. So... Let's think here. How do we want to execute this? I mean, we could actually push a ton of damage here. So we start by frogging. There's no way I can hit with my hammer first to guarantee the buff here. No. So we start by frogging. We clear with this. And now we play this boy. And then we punch him really hard in the face. Hit this, please. Never lucky. And I think I just want to have something on hand. Because if he removes all of this, I still want to be able to keep the elemental chain going. So yeah, hoping for that. And yeah, he's tapping low. I think he's going to heal though. Getting up another baker, maybe. But I think this deck really just abuses warlocks, kind of. I think he's going to have a solution for it, but we have so many ways of killing him. I mean, lightning bolt kills him. Uh, Worm kills him. Instructor Fire Art, probably. Primordial uh, Del Dungeoneer kills him. Wackanol kills him. Fire Elemental kills him. Alakir kills him. So I think if we get an unlucky Fire Heart, then we might not kill him. Okay, so now we don't kill him anymore, but. Twas close. Or maybe these just. Yeah. Ah, oh, so he heals for three now. That's actually kind of slick. But seven, it's not gonna cut it. <laughs> Woo! Elemental Shaman! <laughs> I mean, that wasn't too complicated. Ha ha ha. Oh, excuse me. Somebody just said something really funny in the Crimson Scholars Discord channel. Link is in the description. Now, it's a pretty funny Discord to, to just hang around in. Uh, I've had a ton of fun already, so I would love it if people joined it, because the more the merrier. Alright, Hunter, I think this can be kind of a tricky one, but we're so good at controlling the board. However, his damage is just so explosive, so we just go Wailing Vapor here. I think we just want to find a 2-drop. We really actually need it, because this is not good. Okay, so we're kind of lucky that he got a weak turn 1. Yes, and we get the 2-drop. Perfect. And we might have to break our elemental chain next turn. Which I don't like it, but since we have the Forgeborn, we're going to um, kind of guarantee that we have something for the Lurker. So it's okay to break the chain here. Um, he's just keeping the board clear. Wow. Give me an elemental. Okay, this is better. So, as I said before, like keeping the... Um, chain up here isn't super important but the only thing I could play is the hammer and I would much prefer to get a like a body on board he might use this to trade though but I think this is way better this rock rager is actually pretty good against like mages and warlocks 
I wish I had the coin. Wait. This hits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just kills it. Hmm. Annoying. Because this really sticks. I think we're just going for the Forge Borner. Because we're gonna get that Lurker. And I hope that he doesn't have the 4 drop that lets him discover another Wolpertinger. Okay, good. Because I think going like double Wolpertinger would be huge. I mean, we can get through this. It's hard, but it's possible. Hmm. We can actually go really wide here, which I actually like. And then we play... I think we play Kindling last, right? So we go Rock Rager. I know he can only clear... He can clear it with this, but we just want to make sure that we don't die right now. And we kind of want to match his board with minions. He probably doesn't want to take this in the face. And I'm curious how this will react now. Okay. So we can clear this off safely. Oh, that's so good. Question is, do what do we want to do here? We definitely want to use one of these, so the Primal Dungeoneer isn't coming down. However, we can draw Lightning Bolt from it, but I don't like it. Um, hammer is great. Do we go ha like Hammer Serpent Shrine is pretty good. I think that's our best bet. We hit here. We clear this. We Serpent Shrine. Oh yes, and we get the taunt. That's awesome. Now our board is getting huge. No! Oh yes! He should have played that on zero mana. Good for us. Uh, now this suicide sin, he hits with this. Um. So let's play this first, since this is discounted. Uh, actually, maybe we should have played this first to get uh, the discount off of whatever we get from him. Um, oh yes, actually. That's really good. And I should have swung with my face first. Now we're kind of missing damage. Ah, that's really bad. Okay. Minor misplay, but I think we're getting this. So let's see, he cleared this. Then we have 6, 10... 12 and then we draw then we draw a guaranteed damage spell. I think it probably goes Wolpertinger here. No. Uh how much damage do we have? We have six, seven, eight, nine is the highest. Nine. We can actually do more if we get like a gyre worm. But that's only gonna be twelve. I'm gonna draw it anyways. I'm gonna draw anyways. Stormer is great. I mean, he's gonna play his um, Rhino next turn. I'm just gonna make sure to clear as much as I can here. And I'm gonna play my entire hand. This is gonna make it so that he kind of has lower health targets for his Rhino, but I think just going wide here is better. And then we hit, and then we kind of hope that he doesn't get like a Rindling's Rifle. I don't think he takes me from 13 here. I don't think so. I mean, the max amount of damage he can do now is 3, I think. No, he can do 4 with Hero Power plus like something else. And I think we got him. It's... I don't know. Hunters are kind of scary. But yeah. <laughs> there we go. This deck is so good. I guess everything. Like aggro, control, whatever. It's just the king of the ladder. Alright. Shadow Priest. Probably, right? It's probably Shadow. I think Shadow Priest is pretty hard to beat. We really need to pop off in the beginning. Kind of early. Ooh, I would love to keep a slugger, but it's too slow. I mean, we need to control the board as early as we can, but getting that HP would be really nice. 
This is a pop-off worthy board. Maybe this is control though. <laughs> no, never. So we go Veiling Vapor. I don't think we're gonna coin out the other one. Kind of depends on what we draw. If we draw two drop, then we play the other one. Um, yeah, we did. So it's actually kind of nice now. Because one is gonna die to ping and trade. But what's good if he does like if he has to ping and trade this, he's not gonna be able to draw unless he has a mono feeder panthera. But if he has the other one, like the council member or whatever he's called. There we go. Next turn we go cage match, turn after gyro worm, and then we can uh, keep kind of the um, the board healthy. Okay, he got to draw. Kind of sad. Um Arid Stormer as well, okay. Wish I could kill this, but I think this guy is kind of hardcore going to react to what I'm doing now. Because I'm so far ahead on the board, and the Stormer is great, you know? He has small minions, and this just clears it all. However, sitting on a handful of 3-drops isn't always the best. Whack and all is good, but we have to think, right? right? We really need to get the elemental chain value from these. But the hammer could also be good, but I think that we need like something to fall back on Unless we get like a sheep elemental Okay, now we have a sheep elemental to fall back on which is really nice So we could play this and like the gyro worm or we could use this to rekindle our elemental chain. I think going wide is way better here. And I want to play the Stormer, but I don't think it's going to be worth it. I would rather just ping it with Gyro Worm. I think I'm just going wide since it's against a priest. Now we could ping kill anything, I guess. And this would be the primary target, but I'm fine with it. We could play the Stormer next turn. Oh yeah, he's gonna get a tour guide probably. No? Or he goes for the free. Oh wow, he didn't get the tour guide. Oh wow. I mean, weapon here is so good. This is such a such such an awkward hand. I mean, we're gonna float mana. I would prefer to play the Wekanol, but I also really like to go Forgeborn. So Forgeborn lets me set up a Arid Stormer together with a Whack and All next turn, so we kind of have to do it. But sadly, I'm going to take the clear here. As I said, it's a Shadow Priest. This is great for controlling also. Like, he, he places down like two one ones, and we just boom boom, we bump into it. Is he going to draw more? Panthera, that's fine. I'm not sure what he's looking for. I mean, it's so good. Getting the hammer down is better. I'm gonna take damage in the face here. And now we have the weapon out. And it's been kind of annoying to play around. We got the elemental chain back, so we can go Gyro Worm next turn. Taking two damage, I don't think it's gonna be too bad. And hopefully this lands on the Arid Stormer. I could have made it a 50-50, but I wanted to push one extra damage now, because you never know what happens, right? So, place... No, not placement. You don't really have to worry about placement with this deck, which is kind of nice. Uh, since you don't run the Battlegrounds Battlemaster. But you do have to think about order, like, a lot. Because uh, the buff on this weapon can be so vital. You know, it's just a 1-1, one -one, but... Um, as... Like, in Hearthstone, defense is so good. Like, one attack doesn't really matter usually, even if you're aggro. But uh, one defense really matters, you know. If you're at, like, yeah, three, it pushes you up to four. And four is kind of a sweet spot, usually. Because it's so hard to remove four from the battlefield. It's like, what's it called? Like, flame strike or something. Okay. That thing is huge. Hmm. Could just kill it with these. It's gonna overload me. I think we're gonna. 
We make sure to hit first though. We can't kill this with this next turn. Hmm. Maybe we should wait to hit with the hammer. I think we can hit this with the hammer next turn. It's gonna decrease the chance that the buff lands on this, but I'm fine with that. See what we get first. Oh, that's a big one. Bzz, bzz. And I'm taking the damage here. Uh, yeah, this wakes up and I just want to get through it smoothly. So we can kind of go face, hammer face and fire elemental. Or we just go fire elemental and arid stormer. I don't know. But I kind of like to not have to invest anything from the board and the buff is gonna land on something. So I think this kind of makes sense. I don't think it matters that much, but it's fun to think about. And I think this is the way you kind of control like as a Shadow Priest. He didn't get the best draws in the beginning and we got kind of the nuts, right? We got a one... We got a... Our turn one was two Wailing Vapors, our turn two was a cage match, our turn three was something crazy. So yeah. <laughs> that chain is so insane and also this Forgeborn. So, if you get the chain off on the elementals, they are already kind of overstated. They already have two good effects for their cost because it's like, it's hard to get the value of it. So that's kind of how they made it. Like they are overstated for their cost and pushing that cost down even like one mana, like pushing it down one more is insane. They get so good. I think this guy just gave up. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm taking those ranks. By the way, we might get 11 star win streak. I'm not sure. I'm gonna practice other decks, so I might, you know, I might actually lose to it. Okay, now we just have this boy. Uh, still, this is better. There we go. Just to push the damage. Boom, boom, and a lot of damage. Woo. Ah, all right. Elemental Shaman, super good. Join the Discord. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you soon. Peace.